fingerprint. For more than 100 years, the ridge formations and patterns on our fingerprints have provided the best and most accurate measure of individual personal identities. Our prints don't change, and no two are alike. Since 1924, the FBI has been the nation's central repository for fingerprints, which arrive by the thousands each day. The Identification Division handled the massive task of categorizing and making the prints searchable. In the mid-70s, the FBI moved to digitize new and archived fingerprints to make searches easier and reduce turnaround time. It was at this time, in 1975, that Tom Bush joined the FBI as a fingerprint specialist. In 30 years, he would be put in charge of the division that manages the fingerprint database, the Criminal Justice Information Services Division. But in the early days, he pushed a mail cart filled with fingerprint cards and worked on the floor of the massive repository at FBI headquarters. It was very much a uh, production assembly line type process, so it would, the prints would be uh, classified, and then you would get the, the prints that came to that unit, and then you had to do so many an hour. And you would go search a small segment of the way the prints were classified would lead you to a drawer or a cabinet, would lead you to a cabinet, and then maybe lead you to a drawer, and then maybe lead you to a, a, a small set of prints or sometimes a larger set of prints. Loops, whorls, arches. Skilled examiners developed methods of finding the needle in a haystack. They relied, and still do today, in some cases, on a complex formula for categorizing prints, but also on unusual traits and characteristics they spotted. And I always looked for one identifying part. You weren't looking at the whole ten fingers. I looked at the card, and I was looking for that one uh, kind of uh, abnormal, uh, abnormal fingerprint pattern or um, something that stuck out on that fingerprint. And then I would concentrate on that finger, looking for that matching abnormal uh, aspect. Then when you'd find it, you would pull it out and then sometimes, then you want to look closer and they did have a little glass. I actually keep one on my desk, kind of a reminder where you come from, where you started. And you could use that with a little magnifying glass and you would look in there and um, and then you, would, you could make a confirmation that that was in fact ident. It could take 30 to 45 days to process a fingerprint request in 1975. No small thing for a law enforcement agency that wanted to know if the person they were holding was wanted for another crime. So the system uh, was becoming um, irrelevant, quite frankly. And um, fortunately, people had enough foresight to recognize that, that you know, what good is it in this day and age for me to send a fingerprint in if it's going to take um, that kind of turnaround? In 1977, as Bush left the identification division to become a special agent, prints were being digitized to accommodate the growing need. So then you fast forward to 1999, IAFIS, the new system, goes live. Uh, integrated Automated Fingerprint Identification System. And that system was built to do 62,500 fingerprints a day. Well, today we have 63 million fingerprints on file. And the turnaround, and the system is, as I think we hit a high mark uh, a couple of weeks ago of 183,000 fingerprints we processed in a day. And the uh, majority of those fingerprints are back to the originating agency in uh, 10 to 12 minutes. The next generation identification system, as it is called, is in the works, a database of biometric information that still includes fingerprints but goes even further to other unique individual characteristics. I like to say it's going to be just bigger and better and faster. It's going to be able to handle more prints. We, we envision it handling two and three hundred thousand prints a day uh, fairly routinely. You'll see the day where you will take um, photograph fingerprints, you'll take an iris scan, um, you will take uh, voice exemplars. They will be made to say maybe a standard uh, set of, of, of lines and then I believe uh, there'll be even DNA will be part of this. There'll be a quick capture uh, capability with DNA and a quick processing aspect of DNA. Again, all from people that are that we are authorized to uh, come into the purview of the criminal justice system. The advances won't replace reliable fingerprint data anytime soon, just supplement it. 
Mr. Bush, who retired March 6th as Assistant Director of the Criminal Justice Information Services Division, recalls how, as an agent on the Fugitive Squad in Washington, D.C., he could sometimes determine if a suspect his squad picked up was their man. There were times when I would look at him and say, this isn't the guy. And I remember some of the, the senior agents saying, uh, are you sure this isn't the guy? And I said, if our guy's got all loops, this guy's got all worlds. And, you know, they would look at you, give you that hard stare, but, you know, that was, you know, that was, you know, a decision point, and we'd, uh, we'd let the guy go. Nearly 30 years after thumbing through file cabinets looking for prints and later shepherding the FBI into the next generation of biometrics, Mr. Bush says fingerprints, still an accurate measure of individual identity, will always be a big part of his own identity. The word fingerprints to me almost is, is, is really uh, kind of the, uh, the beginning and the end. It's where I started in this, uh, in this business of the FBI and it's where I'm ending up in this business of the FBI.